Come, weary traveller, I have a tale to tell. Fifteen hundred years ago, there was an instrument that had a place in royal courts, as well as the most humble roadside alehouse in the land. You would find one accompanying epic poetry, and also comforting downtrodden soldiers before battle. I am of course talking of the beguiling Anglo-Saxon liar. This is Redbeard Luthery. The liar has had a place in human history since civilization began. Remains of these ancient instruments have been uncovered in modern day Iraq, the land of the once mighty Sumerian Empire. These discoveries have shown us that the lyre has been used for at least 5,000 years and has had many roles including taking part in ceremony, celebration, religion and warfare. The lyre spread across Asia and into Europe over thousands of years until it developed into the form of the Anglo-Saxon lyre. This term is used loosely for lyres that were used across Europe during the second half of the first millennium. However, I am building one that is based on the lyre found in the Great Burial Mound of Sutton Hoo, dating from the early 7th century in southeastern England. These lyres were either made from a body carved out of a single piece of timber, with a soundboard attached, or a two-piece body. The two-piece body allowed for more structural integrity where the strings attached to the tuning pegs. However, this method is not essential. I drew this outline based off a plan of the Sutton Hoo lyre. I will leave a link in the description for anyone who wants to build their own lyre. Here, I am outlining the headpiece of the lyre. It will be joined to the rest of the body by a mortise and tenon joint. The Anglo-Saxons made incredibly intricate artwork made from gold and other precious metals and stones. A typical motif was a pattern of interwining creatures and animals. These designs would adorn lyres of the time. However, I do not have the metalwork and engraving skills of my ancient ancestors, so I will stick to a more simple but fully functional design. The lyre has a hollow body which results in a resonating sound with projection that is well suited to accompany the spoken word or vocals. I am setting the depth of this chamber with a drill press and will clean out the body with a chisel. But undoubtedly, these instruments would have been carved out entirely with a type of chisel or gouge. Here, I'm marking out the lines for the mortise and tenon joint. Thank you. 
Upon fitting the headpiece to the body, it became clear that I had made errors in marking out the joinery. But do not despair. The tale is far from over. Please join me in the next chapter of this story. This is Redbeard Luthery. Thank you.